Lou, I have to say, I didn't realize all of that was involved in being a dean. Um, <laughs> is it too late? <laughs> thank you for that kind introduction. Um, and thank you, John, for putting this beautiful ceremony together and others who have been involved in that. I want to also acknowledge my family and friends who have come to support me today. My wife, Sarah, and our two children, Ella and Luke. And they appreciated the coloring uh, metaphor, I think, very much. My dad, Roger Roberts, a semi-retired pastor, who made the trip here from Madison with his wife, Jan. My mother-in-law, Artis Felice. My own pastor, Daniel Harrell, and other good friends from Colonial Church. And of course, great appreciation goes to our wonderful president, Lou Zeidner, the dedicated trustees, the great faculty, staff, and students of United and alumni, I would also add. It's an honor for me to be a part of United Theological Seminary of the Twin Cities, much less now installed as its next academic dean. Once upon a time, God flooded the earth and destroyed everything. We can talk about that in <laughs> theology class. But God made a gracious provision for one family and a boatload of animals to ride out the weather. Apparently, after some time, God had forgotten about this solitary ark floating out on the waters because the text says that God remembered them, and then he blew some wind over the waters, and they began to recede. After a long time, this, the father of this floating family and erstwhile zookeeper, Noah, otherwise known as Russell Crowe, uh, <laughs> released a raven to go check things out and see whether any land was in sight. The raven came back empty-beaked, and then he sent out a dove, but it returned empty-beaked. Everything was underwater. Then, after seven days, he sent out the dove again, and it came back with an olive leaf, at which time Noah felt like things were looking up. Then, after yet another seven days, there must be something about that number, he sent out the dove a second time, and it was never heard from again, that's when Noah th knew things were going to be okay. That's my unauthorized translation of the Hebrew text. <laughs> Have you ever wondered where that dove went? What she saw? What she encountered? I bet she had some pretty great adventures. I bet somebody in this room even could write a fascinating novel about the adventures of Noah's dove. Now, if you'll indulge me in yet one more bird story, Soren Kierkegaard told a story about a dove. Well, two doves, in fact. A tame dove and a wild dove. The tame dove was comfortable with his life. He felt secure because he received his food directly and daily from the farmer. One day, the tame dove happened upon a wild dove. This tame dove urged his new friend, the wild dove, to come and live at the farm, to settle down and enjoy a comfortable and secure life. The wild dove responded disdainfully to the tame dove, tame dove, and he flew off to his life of adventure. But eventually, the wild dove longed for the comfort and security that the tame dove had described. Having decided he'd had enough of scrambling and scraping together his food, going from one temporary home to the next, subject to the whim and whimsy of nature, he set off for the farm to reunite with the tame dove ready to eat blissfully from the hand of the farmer without a care in the world. That night, the farmer trapped the wild dove in a box. That was the last anybody ever heard from the wild dove. Nobody wants to imagine what he saw. Nobody wants to write a novel about the rest of his life. Although if someone does, I might suggest the title, When Doves Cry. <laughs> Sorry, Io, I just had to do it. Which brings me to my story. Most of you know I came to United after nearly a decade on the faculty at another seminary. I had mostly enjoyed my time there. I grew a lot professionally and theologically. As Lou mentioned, I had attained tenure and I had achieved full professor status. I was pretty comfortable vocationally speaking. You might say I was the tame, tame dove in Kierkegaard's story, blissfully eating from the hand of the farmer. Well, not exactly. I was ready to move. Theologically, I had been shifting one way while the leadership of the seminary at the time was pushing hard the other way. And the seminary I worked for, like so many today, 
was experiencing a lot of turmoil and transition in the midst of great challenges. The Great Recession and mounting student debt, the crisis in higher education, the specific challenges confronting seminary education. The Lord knows we've had our share of related challenges at United. I'm sure this is overly simplistic, but it seems to me there are two primary options in the face of these challenges. The first, to develop a new and compelling vision, to face challenges with courage, to open arms wide to the world, to be educationally creative, theologically imaginative, ecumenical and inclusive, to explore and to discover, to take risks, albeit calculated ones. In other words, to be a wild dove. But there's another approach. Many leaders and institutions see the future as they gaze out beyond the edges of the farm and they get scared. The anxiety is palpable. They shrink back in fear. They double down on what they know, whether that's conservatism with its exclusivist bent and narrow theology, or even some forms of liberalism which can foster their own kind of narrow-minded fundamentalism and exclusivism. In challenging times, many turn to what they're comfortable with, whether that's a theological narrowness, an exclusivistic identity, or a formulaic pedagogy. Anxiety has a way of prompting us to double down and retrench, to stay close to the farmer and never venture beyond the fence. But tameness leads to stagnation. That's not a recipe for sustainability, and it's certainly not a strategy for excellence. Many wild doves are in danger of being trapped in boxes of their own making. But I can tell you this, United Theological Seminary of the Twin Cities is not among them. It never has been. Over four years ago, I left behind the farm, if you will, (laughs) and came to this wild seminary and haven't looked back. United is a welcoming, creative, transforming community. We study theology with curiosity, openness, and respect for history. We envision new initiatives and approaches to teaching with creativity and imagination. We engage the arts as an element of ministry and theology. We take on pressing social issues with strategies for transforming lives and institutions. We instill a culture of personal spiritual formation in students. We come alongside them as they prepare to lead and serve in the world. We train students for the unique challenges of interreligious chaplaincy. Interreligious, really. We encourage them to become not just better educated ministers, community organizers, and chaplains, but better humans in a broken and conflicted world that needs them, that needs us. For our size, we have a unique, even unparalleled, I would say, configuration of faculty. We have seasoned, veteran, established faculty. We have younger, newer faculty who are energetic and dynamic. We've got Presbyterians, Methodists, UCCers, artists and transformers, social transformers, religious, naturalists, feminists, and liberation theologians, and even practicing Buddhists. We're a diverse faculty representing varied ethnic backgrounds, genders, sexual identities, and theological persuasions. We even have a post-evangelical who doesn't think the virgin birth was a historical occurrence. (laughs) And we have a student body who come from all walks of life, all kinds of theological and religious backgrounds, lifelong churchgoers committed to word and sacrament and local church ministry. We've got chaplains and chaplains in training preparing to be with people in their darkest and bleakest moments. We've got nuns, and we've got duns. Mm-hmm. Nuns, N-O-N-E-S, although we might have some N-U-N-S's too, I don't know. <laughs> Who strive to bring more justice and righteousness in the world. We've got poets, pastors, and prophets. Really, we've got it all. United's a wild dove, but we also get things done. We have a new D-Men concentration in interreligious chaplaincy rolling out this fall. We're going to be announcing a brand new, soon to be hot off the press, pending faculty approval, (laughs) hint, hint, (laughs) Master of Arts in Leadership and Faith Formation for students who want to serve in specialized congregational ministry but who don't need the MDiv to do it. We're offering a course currently on the Quran, and we've got one upcoming on military chaplaincy. We've made all our programs accessible to distance learners while retaining our insistence on the priority of synchronous, real-time education. 
We're developing and implementing a new assessment process that will involve, involve the faculty and others in continuing programmatic assessment and improvement. We are elevating the experience of students as the ultimate criterion of all that we do. My aim, our aim, is that students come away from their time at United feeling like every bit was worth it, even the hard stuff. That they were shaped and transformed and cared for as not only our customers, but as our product, in whom we, faculty, administration, and staff, take great pride and joy. We've had our struggles, we've had our turnover, we've had our chaotic transitions in the past number of years, but through all of that, we've had spirit. We've, we've had life and energy and vibrancy, and we've never been driven by fear and anxiety. That inspires me. We've been motivated by courage, and we've faced an uncertain future with hope and creativity, openness, inclusiveness. With arms of love open wide to the world, strategically and carefully considering the next compelling opportunity. I came into this role as dean unexpectedly. It wasn't in my 10-year plan. It wasn't even in my four-year plan. It was in Lou's plan, apparently. But I'm excited to take it on, and I've never been more energized by my, my vocation, by my work, and more inspired by the people I work with and the students that I teach and learn with. United's not a tame dove, nor is United Kierkegaard's wild dove, whose tragic tale is only good for morality lessons. I like to think we're more like Noah's dove, flying out over the waters and scanning the horizon for the next great adventure, perhaps somewhere around Highway 280 and University Avenue. <laughs> As we live into the future that is now, we'll continue United's tradition of a challenging and open-minded theological education in authentic community, preparing people for service and action in the church and in the world. That's why United will continue to thrive and will form our students to be pastors and leaders of communities, scholars of theology and religion, able interpreters of sacred texts and shapers of culture, ministers of reconciliation, and activists for justice and peace. In your conclusion, you're never supposed to bring up a new idea. But I'm going to break that rule. In the Gospel of Matthew and of Luke, the Holy Spirit appears as a dove. At Jesus' baptism, God proclaims, This is God's Son, the Chosen One, the Messiah. The Spirit then descends on Jesus like a dove. Notice, it doesn't say that the Spirit is a dove, or was a dove. But I can't help but see the connection when I think of Noah's dove out flying out over those waters looking for land, and then finding it, finding new life bursting through waters. The Spirit of God accompanies wild doves, not tame ones, where the spirit is, there is love and courage, not fear and retrenchment. Where the spirit is, there is a spirit of adventure. She accompanies and empowers those who go out in the world with boldness and creativity and imagination, with an expectation that great things will happen, that transformation is just around the corner, that new life is coming. Indeed, it's already here. I'm glad I'm a part of the wild dove that is United Theological Seminary of the Twin Cities, and I hope you are too. I hope you will join us on this adventure, or at the very least pray for us, support us, and cheer for us as we move out further on the waters, following God's spirit of adventure and empowerment for new life. Thank you. Kyle, you have been duly called to be Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of the Seminary. Do you promise to fulfill the responsibilities of your office faithfully and to bring your gifts of knowledge, wisdom, and collegiality to its exercise? I will with God's help. 
Members of the seminary community, do you promise to receive the leadership of Kyle gladly and to support him with collegial affection and vigorous intellectual endeavor? We do relying on the wisdom and traditions that have brought us here. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I declare that Dr. Kyle Roberts is duly installed Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean at United Theological Seminary of the Twin Cities. May this covenant made here today be full and our relationships deepen in the journey we take together. Let us Let walk, walk this, this path, path together. together. <laughs> As we come together, this last uh, rite is an ancient one where we confer and we ask for the Spirit not to be upon Kyle in this newly appointed position, simply from on high, but to be surrounded, surrounded as uh, these wild doves will be upon you. Um, not like the birds, that was a bad image. <laughs> but you will know in terms of how wild this is, in terms of where the Spirit comes from, that you do not know where it comes. But when it catches you, you are here. Um, Kyle, I ask if you can come forward as we do laying on of hands. And I'm going to ask for your family first to come forward and surround him. And to place a hand on him somewhere. And come on to either side. And then for friends, for colleagues, if you wish, you may come forward to lay a hand in, or you can sit at your seat and raise your hand to confer your own spirit, uh, and God's spirit through you as well. Please come forward. Loving and faithful God, it has been a journey. It has been a long one, and our wings may be tired, we may be exhausted, we may have not seen dry land for miles, for hours, for days, and yet you still call us into this wilderness. Whether it be watered, whether it be dry, you call us into this wilderness. Where will that sprig of life be, the green growing edge? Where will it appear? You tell us, God, over and over again, and you affirm for us, even in the midst of our journey and tiredness, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for harm, plans for a future with hope. We ask continually for this affirmation in this weary journey, in this long one. For you have told us through these hands that the sprig of life is here. You have told us and surprised us by words, or sometimes not even by words, but simply by being together, that the sprig of life is here. We ask for your spirit to be upon Kyle as he becomes and walks into and becomes and be and his, his being into this new position. Not to be greatest of all of us, but to be least, as your servant has told us, to serve, to empower, to equip, to lead to lead in a way that this green life flows through him, that he is offering this to us as well. God, we ask in this place of journey that your spirit be upon us, that we take this in light of all that is happening now and the unpredictable future that is here and the excitement and the bewilderment and the confusion, even the hurt and the pain, that what it means to be community, to be guided by you, to be gathered in love is one that casts out all fear, but we know that you are here, and we ask for your presence to abide in his leadership, in every life that he touches, in every connection and relationship that's, that thrives from this green spring. We ask for these wild doves to flap their wings together, to be a flock, to walk and lead and fly into this nation. We ask this in the name of all that is holy, and let the community and the doves say together. Amen. 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 Please congratulate.
to teach you a little song to send us on our way. I've changed it a little bit. I took some liberty um, to change the words. Um, so you'll notice they're kind of um, just, just tailored for today. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Try it. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Listen, put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Let's together. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with a little faster. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Echo me. There's so much hope. There's so much hope. We're not alone. We're not alone. In times of change. In times of change. Keep moving on. Keep moving on. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and the Why don't you all stand up? You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Don't you despair. Don't you despair. Look up ahead. Look up ahead. The path is there. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Keep it going. You gotta put one.